close to the earth but even that close does not mean very close around 2000 kilometers that is up to 2000 kilometers so if you have earth how much is the radius of earth somewhere around 6000 plus 6000 plus so leo is considered as an orbit which is up to one third of earth's radius that's another way to remember it yeah, so you can link geography and science right here one third of earth's radius <coughs> that's your leo and most importantly they orbit very fast means the earth itself travels very fast but these satellites they travel much faster so much so that in 90 minutes they complete one revolution around the earth very fast no? 90 minutes they complete one revolution <clears throat> now one question here maybe a little bit of a basic science what would happen if they travel slowly suppose they travel at a speed of uh, speed in such a way that they are able to make only half a, uh, they are able to take four hours for one revolution or let me put the other way so i'm asking you two questions what happens instead of 90 minutes suppose they take six hours means they go very 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 slowly they go like this okay that is question number one and question number two is instead of being if the same spacecraft if it travels at let's say 10,000 kilometers which is medium earth orbit will it travel at the same speed does it have to travel at the same speed or will it travel at a different speed <clears throat> so these are some uh, the pure play science tech and science tech part which i thought we will discuss right away excellent fiber i'm very impressed that is indeed the right answer the moment the spacecraft speed comes down yeah, the moment a spacecraft speed comes down, the force of gravity, exactly, the force of gravity will pull it down. So, <coughs> please understand that there are, uh, uh, there are, whenever something travels, no, whenever something travels, there are two kinds of, uh, uh, two kinds of uh, forces that are, uh, that are working, okay. So if you imagine this as Earth and this as the satellite, so when the satellite travels, the gravity is pulling the satellite down, but the speed or the centrifugal force, centrifugal force of the satellite is causing the satellite to go away from the Earth. So, so this balancing of force between centrifugal, which tries to pull it out, and gravity which tries to pull it in is what makes the spacecraft make that many revolution. So for a higher centrifugal force, you need a higher revolution per minute, uh, not revolution per minute, let me say higher orbital speed. <coughs> orbital speed. So if the sp same spacecraft if it is traveling far away, then it is that much far away from the Earth's gravity pull and it can afford to travel slowly. Now, this kind of sounds logical also, because if you look at geostationary orbit, they are at 36,000 kilometers approximately, 36,000 kilometers approximately. Yeah, at that height, it is perfectly okay for them to be even stationary and their orbital speed is equal to the Earth's orbital speed. Okay, so I think that's one point I thought we will, <coughs> we will discuss uh, and you guys have anyway uh, answered it correctly. Okay. Now, <coughs> what, uh, in a way, what Vaibhav said also gets answered in the second thing. If the object comes too close to the Earth, then it experiences what is called as an orbital drag. Sorry, orbital decay due to atmospheric drag. So, the closer it is to the Earth, the faster it has to travel. But even then, Generally, all satellites are placed above 160 kilometers because if it is below 160, the force of gravity is very, very strong. Now, who uses this orbit and for what purpose? All human space flight in the history have happened in the Leo. So, when someone says that this guy had gone to the space, what it means is 
he has gone to the space which may be around let's say 200 kilometers above the earth surface and maybe they go up to 400 kilometers above earth surface what is this 400 kilometer 400 kilometer is the height at which you have <coughs> the international space station international space station so the interesting thing about international space station is also like the earth which rotates from west to east the international space station also rotates from west to east but at a faster pace at a faster pace so its speed is something like seven and a half kilometers per second per second imagine seven and a half kilometers per second <coughs> so one all human space flights have taken in the second it's the simplest and cheapest for satellite placement you know no marks if you guess it right why because if you have to send a satellite to a, a low earth orbit your launch vehicle need not be very powerful it just has to be powerful for you to place the satellite at 200 300 400 kilometers okay and the second thing is if the satellite wants to send something because the distance is only 200 kilometer the time lag in communication is very less so this time lag in communication is called latency means if you someone says in leo the satellites have low latency then that's a correct state because they are close to the earth surface <laughs> okay they are close to the earth surface now don't get confused with this communication with the communication satellite both funda are slightly different there in geostationary when you say communication satellite the satellite appears stationary with respect to a point in earth so the communication antenna in your various scientific research laboratories it need not be changed often it is pointed at the same direction so there it helps in that kind of communication here when you see there are certain special kinds of communication uh, means sending a picture <coughs> okay uh, the the uh, spy satellite captures a picture and sends it now sending the picture from space to the ground is what that is communication only no so that speed is much faster or in other words the time lag between the satellite sending it and you receiving it is much less okay but but what is the disadvantage the disadvantage is also quite logical if you see the disadvantage is also quite logical let's look at it in the form of figure so that we can remember it better <clears throat> so i have heard okay for now let's not assume the tilt huh? let's assume there is no tilt suppose there is uh, a satellite which is um, yeah is the lower earth orbit let's say the lower earth orbit how much can this satellite see it can see only this much no? on the contrary if a satellite is here let's say at the uh, geostationary orbit then how much can the satellite see almost half of the earth am i right you can see almost half of the it is it is something like very logical no the taller you climb in a building the more earth you can see <coughs> that's logical as that okay <coughs> that's a small drawback that's a small drawback because the satellite is so close to the earth it can have a limited view now what does this mean if you want to have an application that covers entire of india then one satellite will not be sufficient there you come across the concept of constellation <coughs> constellation of satellites and it's not a coincidence that the name now big c stands for constellation so we will see <coughs> the the navic and the ir nss uh, shortly okay let's move on to the other yeah so what are they used for Achha, so uh, the other thing uh, the other uh, uh, broad name uh, I told about remote sensing satellite. No, I told about Indian remote sensing satellite. The Indian remote sensing satellite, they are of the type Earth observation satellite. <coughs> what are they? They are Earth observation satellite. Now you can observe the Earth for multiple reasons. You can observe the Earth 
to know the resources of the earth. For example, you can observe the earth for map of the earth. So that is map making, cartography. Therefore, you even have a name <coughs> of the satellite called Cartosat. You can observe the earth for the weather phenomena. So there will be some satellites focusing on weather phenomena. You can also observe the satellite uh, Earth for military purposes. So all of them, if I repeat, remote sensing satellites are Earth observation satellites which can observe the Earth for multiple objectives. Immediate purposes includes map making, resource assessment, in fact disaster management and rescue operations, meteorology being some of the civilian applications. Five satellites monitoring the movement along, let's say, border areas, enemy troop movements, so on and so forth. They are also Earth observation satellites, but they have a different resolution. They have a far better resolution. So, what are the various types of resolutions of remote sensing satellites? We will see in the next few slides. <coughs> okay. So, one is the low Earth orbit. 